Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where a Karen falls in the ocean. Our next Reddit post is from Jack. I'm a 43-year-old IT guy, divorced with two kids, a 9-year-old girl and a 7-year-old boy. I'm a member of a yacht club, and I own a small 34 Bavaria cruiser from 2008. Next to my kids, she's my pride and joy. Every year, I take three-week vacations along with my kids, and we go cruising for the better part of those three weeks. We have a small dinghy that basically serves as our pickup truck and food hall. Now, because of COVID, we couldn't go anywhere outside of our home country, so we said screw it, we'll be tourists in our own country. We went for a cruise to all the small, cozy harbors that we normally don't see. So, our cruise is a go. My son knows about the lines and how to dock and whatnot. My daughter is the dinghy skipper during this. She loves that thing. We always have our club pennant flying, as well as the Jolly Roger. Typically, the Jolly Roger means, kids on board, come play. We leave our home port, and we spend a day and night at sea to get our sea legs growing and sharpen up in our boating drills. I'm retired Navy, I can't help it. On our third day, we arrive at a small marina, roughly 200 berths. And for those who don't know, a berth is basically a parking space for a boat. In my country, we don't have to call ahead, so the only thing to do is either go in with the boat or send in the dinghy to spot for a berth. Now, occupied berths are marked with a red sign, and available berths are marked with a green sign. My kids know this, and they're also learning to spot a fitting berth. Our boat is 3.6 meters wide, and each berth is a different width. So the trick is to spot a berth wider than 3.6 meters, but not wider than 4 meters because that's the golden difference. Any berth wider than 4 meters costs a ton of money, and it's meant for bigger boats. Well, my daughter, Captain Dingy, was volunteering as always to scout ahead while me and my son were watching from just outside the inlet. She was equipped with a life jacket, radio, and a pretty good idea of how big 3.6 meters actually is. Now, most people that hang around marinas are used to seeing children in dinghies, and they wouldn't raise an eyebrow over a 9-year-old girl in a small dinghy wearing a life jacket and looking for empty berths. However, not all people are like that, which we would soon find out. My daughter found a berth and radioed back saying, I've got one, Daddy. It's the Jeep here and I'm waiting for you here. Over. I reply, good job. I'm in route now. Daddy out. The owners of the boats on either side are nice, caring older couples. And especially the port side neighbors are completely stunned by my daughter, Captain Dingy, and her professionalism. They're all chatting when we arrive to the berth and they help with mooring, so I repay them with a cold beer and a soda for the kids. Happy days all around. On the opposite side of the pier, a couple of boats are also flying the Jolly Roger, so the kids are off for a quick lunch. The berth directly opposite us was also available, but knowing from experience, this would soon change. And how right I was. Later in the afternoon, we saw the arrival of HMS Karen and her sailing circus. Karen's ship arrived while the nice grandparents next door and I were discussing nice marinas to visit. And as a matter of course, we stood by to help receive lines and help with Karen's mooring. To sum up their docking, it was a shit show. They had a trimaran, which has three hulls. The outer two can retract when you dock and extend when you sail. They knew nothing about the boat, so clearly it was a rental boat. They attempted to dock like five or six times. One time with one side retracted. One time with the other side retracted. One time with no side retracted. They were doing this on full power and there was just constant screaming all around. The harbor master even came down to join us. Now there were like eight guys plus one harbor master just looking like, what the F are you doing? Even, <laughs> even my seven year old son comes by with his new friends and he's like, are they for real? We managed to convince Karen's family to throw us the forward line so we could pull them in after they retracted both pontoons. This took the better part of one and a half hours. When they finally docked, they acted like they invented boating. I know that docking in a foreign port can be quite difficult, but when you need eight people to help you, you might keep a low profile. Not that couple though. They were totally clueless about how to get power, water, and how to register with the harbor master who happened to be standing right in front of them while they docked. Karen started full on yelling about how they paid a lot of money to rent that boat and how they expected harbor fees to be included in that rent. She threatened to report the harbor master to the rental company they used and get him fired for trying to extort money from them. After her endless monologue, the eight to 10 guys standing around were just laughing. The harbor master just looked at them and went, okay, these are the rules. Each marina requires a fee for docking. That fee covers power, water, and the space you occupy. 
It includes access to bathrooms, cooking facilities, and cleaning. Your rental company doesn't own this marina, is that clear? Karen's husband understood, but he failed to convey that last part to HMS Karen. This was something we found out later the next morning. The next morning, me and my family prepared to go underway. The kids said their goodbyes to their new friends. My son was pampered with cookies from the grandma next door, and Captain Dingy was getting ready to go underway. Here's where the real entitled parent part comes in. We made all the preparations to leave. While I'm doing this, Karen comes running up to me. What are you doing? I said, good morning, we'll get underway now. We're going to such and such island. Enjoy your stay here. What? You can't leave. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can. Why wouldn't I? Because we want that boat. What? You want my boat? Lady, my boat is not for sale, so excuse me, we have to go. No, all boats are the property of the rental company, and we called them yesterday and chartered that boat. Now hand it over, or else. Lady, you are nuts. At this point, we're not actually attached to the marina anymore, and my son is rolling up the bow lines. That's when the Karen tries to grab the push pit to keep us from leaving, and, well, she lost that battle. <laughs> the Karen fell in the water. I said, all stop, man overboard. The Karen came up to the surface of the water yelling and screaming. The older man in the starboard boat guided her on board their boat, and he asked her what the hell she was doing. Meanwhile, someone else called the harbor master. I said, is she okay? The old guy said, yeah, we got her. Go enjoy your trip. We'll see you in the next port. So we left, and oh boy did I hope that that was a one-time Karen encounter. OP, it sounds like this Karen got off easy. If she rented a sailboat and knew literally nothing about boats, then she's lucky she didn't drown at sea. Our next Reddit post is from Mindful Therapist. So this happened last weekend. I was flying out of JFK Airport in New York, also known as one of the worst airports in the US. I was also trying not to catch the plague by wearing a double mask. When I was in the TSA line, I was surrounded by two families, a mom and her son behind me and two parents with two boys in front of me. The mom in front of me was tired. Like, she was sitting on a big carry-on bag while her husband wheeled her around level tired. The dad was so focused on the mom not falling off the suitcase that the boys were just darting about and trying to play with the boy behind me as well. It's 6.30 a.m. I'm on two hours of sleep, so the world is just too much for me. But I also worked at a special needs preschool for two years prior to becoming a therapist, so I know how to wrangle kids on minimal sleep. I go into crowd control mode, asking the boys about their interests, but reminding them that we have to be quiet to talk about them. I find out their brothers are Eric, who's nine, and Daniel, who's six. And they're both really excited about going on a plane. Then the boys start having a quiet conversation about Minecraft. The mom behind me thanks me, and we actually have a nice chat about me previously working in the special needs school and how fun it was. An hour and a half later, I'm boarding my plane, and I see the tired mom like five rows back from where I was seated. She was at the window seat, and she's already passed out. I sit, and about five minutes later I see the dad and his two boys coming on the plane. The first kid, Daniel, sits down next to me, and the dad pauses for a moment, just staring at me. After a minute, I'm just like, uh, is something wrong? I kid you not, this man proceeds to take the boarding pass out of his second son's hand, swap it with his, and tell his son to sit in the aisle seat. He then runs back to the row that his wife is in. Once the disbelief wears off, the boy starts asking me questions about the plane and snacks and the TV mounted in front of him. I'm so exhausted that I don't even fight it. I show the older one how to turn the TV on in front of him and I say, listen, I'm really sleepy, like your mom, so I'm going to take a nap. Both of them tell me to have a nice nap and I pass out. I wake up two hours later to my tray down with a mini water bottle and a bag of cookies on it. Apparently, my new friends thought that I might want a snack when I woke up. They were nice kids. 30 minutes before we land, there's commotion behind us and what sounds like running. All of a sudden, the formerly asleep mom is very much awake and looking over both her kids to make sure they're alright. Both the kids mention how they've been watching Moana, so they're perfectly fine. The mom then shot her husband that classic face of displeasure. When we got off the plane, the mom followed me to the bathroom to apologize. Apparently, she took some medication to help ease her anxiety with flying, but it just kind of knocked her out. Well, you can't be anxious if you're unconscious, I suppose. Her husband was supposed to sit with the younger boy while the older one sat with her. 
She freaked out when she woke up and saw her husband sitting next to her. So in her drowsy state, she thought her husband forgot the kids back at JFK, hence her panic. Apparently, her husband thought it was a good idea to leave them with me because he heard me talking about working at a school and figured they'd be fine with me. She apologized, and when we left the bathroom, she made her husband apologize for abandoning our children with a stranger. The whole walk out to the pickup area, she was reminding her kids about stranger danger and how they have to be careful in big places like this. Daniel gave me a paper heart that he folded out of a New York City brochure, so I have a new best friend now, lol. Okay, so personally, my favorite subreddit is Pro Revenge. I just love stories of, you know, someone getting wronged and then through patience and guile and cunning and maybe even luck, they finally get revenge against the person who wronged them. It's just, it gives me a justice boner. And so obviously, my favorite stories are the stories with a huge payoff at the end. <laughs> but, but this story OP, you kind of just sat there and you were like a nice person to these kids. And as a result, you didn't actually do anything to enact vengeance against his dad who just offloaded his kids to you. However, I have a sneaking suspicion that the father is about to get a heaping dose of justice in his future. If, <laughs> if my wife found out that I had given our daughter to some complete and total stranger to watch for a while, then yeah, I'd be, I'd be sleeping in the doghouse. And <laughs> we don't even have a doghouse. Our next Reddit post is from Boats and Chokes. I just moved into a new place with a pool out back. My neighbor lady came up to the fence the other day while I was having a beer and doing some yard work. After the greetings and whatever else, the rest goes like this. The people who lived here before would let my kids use the pool in the summertime. My kids are really sad about not being able to use it anymore. I'm thinking to myself, why guilt trip me? Just ask, lady. I said, oh, well, I don't mind as long as you're there too. I can't watch them. Well, the last people would watch them because their own kids were there too. They would just sit out back. Okay, but I can't watch your kids. If they're going to be in my pool, you have to be there too. I don't have time. I don't know why you can't just sit there and watch them so they can swim. I had no idea how to respond to this. She caught me so off guard. Now I think that I need to change the lock on the gate because I'm afraid she has a key and she'll send her kids over alone. I don't have a problem with her kids using the pool, but I don't want to babysit the kids of someone I don't know around water. Also, OP, <laughs> the bigger red flag here is she's basically saying, Hello, complete and total random stranger. Would you watch my kids completely unsupervised for a few hours? Thanks. And golly gee, I sure hope you don't molest him because if you did want to, you would completely get away with it. I've got a four-month-old daughter, and obviously it's years and years before she'll actually be able to go to someone's house and swim in their pool without, you know, actual help because she's a baby. Still, I can't even imagine wanting to give my daughter to a stranger who just moved into the neighborhood and just be like, well, gee, I, I hope they're not a murderer. I hope they're not a molester. Let's, let's cross your fingers. Good luck, Lily. Gee, thanks, Dad. I sure hope that he's not a molester, too. Bye, Pops. Our next Reddit post is from Witch's Coven. Hey Reddit, this happened back in August of 2020. I was coming back from Budapest to London. So I was on a packed plane because other flights to England had been cancelled, thanks COVID. And thus, I was placed next to a mother and child. I was in the aisle seat, the entitled mother was in the middle, and her kid was in the window seat. Before we get to the actual entitlement, the mother had asked me if I would swap seats with her kid because I originally had the window seat. I said sure, as long as she would take some photos of the outside for me when we took off. Not bad, right? She took one blurry photo and passed me my phone back. Thanks. Ah well, I was just gonna watch Venom on my phone, which I hadn't seen yet. I put my headphones in and began the movie, but after about 20 minutes, the mother and child swapped seats, so now the seven-year-old boy was sitting next to me. Whatever, I paid it no mind. If you haven't seen Venom yet, I would definitely recommend it, because I was so engrossed in the film that I didn't even notice the entitled kid watching it too. Remember, I had headphones in. It got to a scene where Venom bit the head off of a bad guy and the mother tapped my shoulder. I paused the movie and took my headphones out. I've gone over this moment in my head every month since it happened, so this is pretty much word for word what was said. Excuse me, is that appropriate for children? No, sorry, this is like a 15 I think. Ah, so don't you have anything appropriate for a child? No, sorry, I downloaded this off Netflix and I can't use my internet. Right, she said, and I assumed that was the end of it. Nope. 
I went back to watching with my headphones in, and she tapped me again. Aren't you going to turn that off? She asked about my movie. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I am very confrontational. Confrontation makes me giddy, but I was completely shocked. Uh, no, I'm still gonna watch the movie that I picked for my flight, I responded. Now the kid piped up. Do you have any games that I could play? No, because I'm watching a movie. Come on, he's bored. That's not my problem though, is it? Excuse me? Oh, now I done it. It's not my problem that your kid is bored, you should have planned ahead. I just shrugged and put my headphones back on. I pressed play and resumed the movie. Another two minutes passed, and once again the mother and kid swapped places. Yeah, the mother was now sitting next to me. Yay! The movie came to an end, and there wasn't much time left on the short flight. I unlocked my phone and went to Spotify, so the mother probably thought that I couldn't hear her, so she mumbled, You could at least let my kid play a game now, you spiteful b****. How about you be effing grateful that I let your kid look out the window the entire flight, you ungrateful grunt? Oh, you know the phrase, silence speaks volumes? Silence. I could hear her breathing. She made it a point to move next to me as much as possible to annoy me, but honestly, I couldn't stop laughing at her, which angered her further. Then, finally, we landed. I made sure to wait until everyone got off the plane before I got my luggage just to live up to my petty nature. F you and your kid. Wow, this story's doing really well. Hopefully I'll end up on r slash. Hi r slash. Hello OP, thanks for your story. That was r slash Entitled Parents, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.